Good evening and welcome to the special edition of UW Now. I'm Sarah Shute, the Executive Director of the Wisconsin Alumni Association, and I'm so glad to have you with us here tonight. Our goal in this series is to bring bits of UW-Madison to you wherever you are. And days like this in the late spring and early summer, so many of us long to be sitting on the terrace in front of the Memorial Union, looking out at Lake Mendota and taking in the view of all the people. Unfortunately, circumstances prevent us from doing that just now as the Union and um, the Terrace and nearby Alumni Park are all closed at this time to the public. However, this evening, we are going to be able to recreate some of the magic of the Union and the Terrace in this program. And we're going to explore the history of the Wisconsin Union and hear from some folks who are involved with it right now. So pull up your mini chair and grab your favorite beverage. And please join me in welcoming our first guest. Mark Gouthier is the Associate Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs at UW-Madison, and he is also Director of the Wisconsin Union. Mark's been on campus since 2001 in that role. Mark, I'm thrilled to have you here tonight. Thank you, Sarah. I'm thrilled to be here. That's great. So, um, Mark, first, let's just talk for a second about the fact that the terrace is closed. That must be pretty tough for you and, and for your team. Uh, it is. It's tough for everybody uh, associated with the union, uh, but it's the right thing to do at this time uh, for the health and safety of the community. Um, but uh, we're making plans to reopen, and so that's one of the reasons what, that we're kind of closed right now is so that we can begin to prep everybody for what that reopening will look like and kind of the new rules and regulations we'll have to have in order to be in compliance, right? So, um, but uh, we don't know when that is right now. So if, if that's one of the questions on the program tonight, we don't have an answer for that yet. But, uh, uh, but it will be, we hope, uh, sometime this summer, uh, will be some uh, sense of normalcy will return to the terrace. So. I sure hope so, for all our sakes. Well, even though people, we don't know when it'll be open and people can't go there yet, I see that you um, have some great union terrace spirit there behind you with your terrace chairs. So you brought yeah. it to you. Yes, I do. Uh, and one of them is the um, chair that uh, the special limited edition mini chair we did last summer in support of the Vet Med project on campus, the Holstein chair there. Uh, and then we had a large uh, full size one made for our own use. Uh, and uh, we were about ready to uh, unveil another one for this year uh, in conjunction with the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. But uh, that's kind of been put on hold for a little while. And hopefully we'll still be able to share that with uh, the community uh, sometime later this year. I know. I hope I'll be able to see that special chair. Well, even though people can't do it in person, I know both you and the Alumni Association um, have developed some virtual backgrounds for people. So mm -hmm. I know that my colleagues have really been taking advantage of uh, being able to seem like they're present in some of their favorite spots, even though they can't be in. And for those of you who are watching, you can get those at uwalumni.com. So I encourage you to download those. Uh, so, Mark, um, I know working across Alumni Park from you uh, that the opening of the terrace is one of our very favorite days of the year and we start to see those chairs walk across. Um, tell us what usually goes into the process of getting ready to, to open. What's involved from an operational standpoint? Well, uh, we actually begin that process no later than uh, the 1st of February, sometimes er earlier than that. Uh, and it's really... Um, process of uh, putting into place what our goals and objectives are for the upcoming summer season. Uh, <clears throat> everything from are the new um, products, food and beverage items we want to introduce to uh, what will the program mix be on the terrace. Uh, and that, of course, is all in the hands of uh, the student leaders and Wisconsin Union Directorate. So it's really important for us from an operations side and from a programming side to coordinate all that really early on and really uh, hopefully come out with a great uh, marketing and communications message by the time uh, commencement weekend is here, because that's when we really kind of get into full steam, usually. Yeah. <laughs> if the weather cooperates right. and pandemics, right? right. right. Um, well, I know you're you're so well versed in, in uh, the current operations of the union, but before we go further, I would love to hear the history of the union. I know it has a, a long and storied history, a lot of unique things about it. So um, please, why don't you share some, some things about the history of this institution that we all love? Okay, I would love to. Uh, so I'll um, also share some um, 
photos along the way. I really want to talk about five items uh, when I talk about uh, the history and what makes the, uh, the Wisconsin Union uh, so special. Uh, so a little bit on history and philosophy. Of course, uh, one of the things that makes it so special is its student-led nature. That's number two. Uh, three is the fact that uh, we still have this membership concept and that uh, people belong to the union. Uh, and so that um, is one of the ways that we're special. Our locations make us special, so we'll spend a little time on that. And then the fact that the union itself is this memory making place uh, for so many people. So when I start with history, uh, here's an early image. Uh, the, uh, <clears throat> this would have been uh, in the late 1920s, maybe the early 1930s. Uh, Memorial Union was uh, opened in 1928, but the union as an organization actually began uh, much uh, sooner than that. It uh, was a student organization, uh, begun in 1907. And it was really the first um, uh, student organization on the campus where every student could belong. So uh, up until that time, uh, students were really segregated into classes based on what year they were in school, and uh, they couldn't all belong to the same club. And the union was the first time in 1907 that students could all belong to a particular club, a single club together. Um, uh, the um, uh, Building was a result of a fundraising campaign in the early 19 in the mid 1920s, uh, where students and alumni came together to raise the money for the building. Uh, that was the uh, first uh, Memorial Union was the first uh, totally privately funded building on the campus. Uh, no state tax dollars went into it, uh, and it really was. Um, example uh, at the time of the birth of social centers also uh, in the Midwest, uh, uh, Wisconsin, uh, part of the progressive tradition, also was one of the leaders in developing social centers. Uh, uh, certainly uh, the American Club over in Kohler is an example of that. In fact, uh, uh, the Kohler family, early supporters and proponents of a union on the campus, Walter Kohler uh, actually uh, was um, uh, the largest single contributor to the uh, Memorial Union uh, from the very beginning. And so uh, we're really proud of that uh, connection to the Kohler family. Um, in uh, 1939, or 1929, sorry, the uh, year right after the Memorial Union opened, the terrace uh, opened. Here's an early uh, image of the terrace. Uh, the terrace has undergone several renovations through the years, and I'm sure we'll talk about that more in the program. Um, and the theater came along in 1939. Um, there wasn't enough money in 1928 to build the entire concept of the Union. And so uh, you see a different architectural design and style with the Union Theater added uh, 11 years later in an art modern style. Um, and then Memorial Union itself received uh, a historic restoration from uh, top to bottom uh, in the years 2012 to 2017. Um, so that's kind of a, a little history of the Memorial Union. Um, it's the uh, unions on, in the United States are really modern day uh, equivalents of debate societies that started in Oxford and Cambridge. Um, and uh, it was an, the first attempt by students at that point uh, to explore ideas and issues outside the classroom. So that at its foundation is what a union is really all about. It's about giving students an opportunity to explore what they want to explore, to uh, debate the topics they want to debate, and to present the programs for their fellow students that they want to present. Um, and without um, direction, a whole lot of direction at all, really, from uh, staff and faculty. Um, so that's the second thing I want to talk about is the student-led nature of the, of the Wisconsin Union. Here you'll see some images uh, as we talk about this, about the programming that happens. Over 2,000 events are scheduled every year at Memorial Union and Union South, all through the Wisconsin Union Directorate. Uh, the union's governing board is uh, uh, led by the student union president. A new student president is elected every year. Um, and the governing board has a majority of students on it. So there are 15 members of the governing board, union council. Nine of those are students, two faculty, um, two staff, and two alumni. Um, I'm one of the staff members, so I have one vote on the governing board. Um, so from the very beginning, the union has been about uh, uh, paying attention to and advocating for the student voice and student leadership. Uh, it really ensures that the union remains relevant to each succe succeeding generation of students. That's why I believe students uh, through the decades feel like Memorial Union, Union South are their buildings, uh, even though uh, what it was for them in the 1970s is strikingly different than what it is for students in, the, uh, in 2020. Uh, that's because the program that happens there and the uh, activities that are provided and uh, the essence of the union 
during their time on campus is really determined by students, by their fellow students. Um, so um, that um, it leads me to why uh, I think one of the, uh, or the third uh, special thing about the union is this concept of uh, that uh, it, it um, creates a sense of belonging and that our membership program still exists. So because students are so involved in the program of the union and direct it, uh, I believe that uh, there's a desire to uh, be connected to it um, for um, their lifetime as alumni. And so uh, we still retain a very active membership program because uh, uh, alumni, members, uh, private support for the union, which is how it was built originally, is still the magic secret of how it continues today. So uh, here you see an image of celebrating the opening of the Tong Family Marina. You know, major capital improvement made this last year to Memorial Union. Again, an example of uh, private support and student support coming together to make a major improvement to a building that was originally built with student and private support. Um, so that original formula from the 1920s we still use today. Uh, members are very uh, important to our lifeblood. Uh, we still, uh, we're probably the last union in the country that still has an active membership program. So that makes the Wisconsin Union special. We don't know of another one that still uh, actively recruits members after they graduate. Uh, and uh, we're pretty proud of that. In fact, this year, our membership organization, the Wisconsin Union Association, the trustees of that group, uh, made a decision to extend lifetime membership to all uh, members who asked for it of the class of 2020. Uh, as a result of the fact that they really couldn't have most of their last semester on the campus. And as a way to reach out and embrace them and to say that uh, we understand your year ended, not the way you had uh, anticipated, of course, but we want you to be part of our family. We want you to be a member of the union for the rest of your life. And we're going to uh, give you something special to help you mem remember your last uh, semester on the campus. So. That's all been done through our membership organization. So you'll meet one of uh, our trustees in a little bit. Uh, the fourth thing that makes the union special are our locations. And uh, um, of course, I have no control over that. Uh, somebody uh, made the decision early on that uh, the Memorial Union would be built on the banks of Lake Mendota. Uh, how fortuitous, uh, there, you know, there, I don't think anyone knows of another uh, more beautiful place for a, a union building in the country than the one here in Madison. And of course, uh, we've had this wonderful improvement to the space over the last few years with the uh, uh, addition of uh, Alumni Park right next to Memorial Union. And it really created this wonderful partnership between the union and the Wisconsin Alumni Association and really has created this uh, really one of a kind civic space uh, on any college campus. Uh, the, the interplay between the terrace and Alumni Park and you see a striking image of that here. And then the other location by, um, again, by, uh, uh, fortune, good fortune is uh, Union South really in the shadows of uh, Camp Randall. And so really positions our second major facility on the campus really is part of the central to the game day experience, uh, uh, really serving a whole section of the campus that is more than a 15 minute walk from Memorial Union. So then there's a whole nother host of students, faculty and staff on this side of campus that uh, received just wonderful programs and services from a second facility, but its location has uh, allowed it to also create its own sense, sense of tradition and importance to campus life by being so close to the athletic uh, facilities on that side of campus. So, so location is really one of the special things. And then five is uh, the memory making aspect of a union, but particularly our union. So uh, here you see uh, the um, newest version of Lady Liberty. Uh, this uh, came out um, two years ago, led by students, uh, wanted to resurrect uh, this wonderful memory that students in the 1970s had of uh, Lady Liberty coming out onto the ice. That original um, uh, sculpture uh, had really suffered wear and tear through the years and wasn't able to be used again. And it, through modern technology and thinking differently, came up with the idea of making it an inflatable. And uh, so now this has gone up two years in a row. So old memories become new memories. Um, that happens at the union all the time. Um, of course, we have um, lots of people that have their first uh, um, vision of a, a sunset at the union and lots of people that get married at the union. Um, but uh, unions in general, and particularly this union, are places where uh, milestone moments are celebrated from uh, 
at the campus. And so that can, they tend to be where the community goes to celebrate personal accomplishments, uh, national achievements like uh, sporting events, right? Winning uh, major games and so forth. Um, but also um, moments of great sadness in the nation uh, are times that the union is a place where people come to um, come to terms with that, right? And one of the ironies of this particular sadness, the pandemic, is that uh, the very thing unions are built for, and our union does so well, bringing people together was something we couldn't offer the campus, right? Because that's just, uh, and so who would have thought that there'd be a pandemic or a, um, a national tragedy of such that uh, actually coming together was the thing we couldn't do, right? So, so we're coming to grips with that. And uh, I think we'll explore that a little bit in the program about how we uh, uh, still build community even though we can't be together right now, so. Yeah. Well, thank you, Mark. Um, you know, I just was was beaming with pride through through your presentation. I know I know our alumni and our friends always like they know how special the union is. They know how special our campus is. But to hear hear it all bundled up like that and and uh, really appreciate really what a special place and a special entity the union is. And I appreciate you mentioning Alumni Park. And I was thinking about how, you know, the, the Terrace and Memorial Union are so central to, to many, many students in creating their student experience. And now we have this great, this great time arc mm -hmm. uh, in physical space, but also in intent by the memories people make on campus and then how we celebrate alumni and their contributions and the memories that happen after when they come back. So that's one of the, the great things and the wonderful things about our partnership too. Um, with that whole space. Absolutely. Not to mention, it's just darn beautiful down it there. Too. So, <laughs> lucky us to work yeah. there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Mark, you know, you did mention one of the special things, of course, about the union is the involvement of the students um, and the student leaders who do all of the programming and put, put on the, the 2000 or so programs a year. How many students are involved in those leadership roles on the directorate? So we have uh, 10 committees and clubs under the um, okay. leadership of the directorate. Uh, all those committees um, uh, have uh, volunteers that um, uh, gather around theme areas, you know, music, film, art, so forth. Um, and so the, there are about 300 committee members that uh, work under those uh, committee structures. And then we also have uh, clubs, six clubs, um, all of them outdoor recreation um, and under the umbrella of Hoofers. Uh, and those clubs uh, have about 2,000 active members in them. So between the committees and the clubs, uh, you know, we're approaching 2,500 students on the campus are active in the union in these leadership roles, uh, producing the programs uh, for their fellow students. Wow. What a great what a great experience for them as student leaders and how wonderful that students can program for students, too. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're really lucky that one of your student leaders is with us as our next guest on the program. I'm very pleased to welcome Liam Granlund. Liam is a senior at UW or an incoming an ascending senior at UW-Madison <laughs> studying uh, biomedical engineering and film. Um, that might sound like a unique combination, but it makes more sense when you know that Liam was last year's director of the film committee in the Wisconsin Union Directorate. So Liam, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. It's honestly an honor. I love it. Okay. This is this is so much fun. So thank you. Well, well, great. And, and true to your <laughs> film committee, you have a nice array of lights behind you, too. So very I was theatrical. told I look. I was told I look like I'm in Hollywood here, and I love it. And I, got, I have like so many cool movies. I have a, a, a Clue poster in the back too, which is super good. You can't see Abs it. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> you know, Liam, one of the things that struck me when Mark was sharing um, his presentation is that you, we think of the union and the union is a physical place and it's two buildings and it's a terrace, but it's also an experience. And I was struck by that, that experience part of it and how important the students are in creating that. Tell us a little bit about how the experience of the union has impacted you and, and how your leadership role with the union directorate um, has meant meaning, has had meaning for you. Yeah, of course. So when I came in as a freshman, I've always saw myself as kind of an outgoing person and had no problem dealing with people or, or getting to know people. Uh, but I was still really nervous to find a group on campus that I could like, like, jive with vibe with uh which is awesome but uh i when i found out that there was a film committee i was like oh you know it's, i like movies uh, i'm going for film so might as well check it out uh, i showed up the first day and the second i walked in the door people were talking to me they invited me to sit down and everything 
Uh, and I was like, this is my place. This is the place I need to be. And that kind of vibe just continued for the entire time I was there. And so I like to say now that like the people that I've I've gotten uh, to know at the union and the people that I, I work with on a day-to-day -day basis. They're like my family that I found on campus. It's like, it's like the, the energy of a found family, uh, which is super lovely. Oh, I love the way that sounds. That's, <laughs> that's terrific. Well, you know, I'm acutely aware that we're talking about experience um, and, and a sense of place, but we're doing it virtually. And so I have to ask you, you know, how did this current situation change the work of your committee and the union directorate, how did you continue to create experience for UW students this spring? So for sure, uh, I think the way that I, I love to describe it is there's a great quote from Thor Ragnarok that uh, I'm sure everyone has seen and loves, uh, but at, towards the end of the movie, uh, you know, something happens to Asgard uh, and they're talking about it and they're saying, Asgard isn't a, a place, it's a people. And that's the same way I feel about the union. It's a, it's a, it's, it's not a place, it's a people. All, all the people I've gotten to work with, uh, you know, for the, over the last few years and I continue to work with every day, we're so excited to keep doing programming even though this whole COVID thing happened, which was insane. Uh, it's like, ah, you know, we could just take the loss and the programming, but no, we decided that we wanted to keep going. So every week, the film committee would still have 20 to 25 people who would get in a Zoom call and set up. We did online brackets that if you don't follow us on social media, follow Wood Film on social media. Hey, there's a little bit of plug there, but follow us on social media. We were doing brackets. Uh, we upped our social media game by posting more. Uh, we created a top 10 list of our favorite things. We did a top 10 list of our favorite uh, superhero films and a top 10 list of our favorite songs and movies. Uh, but then we also did online Netflix parties where we uh, were able to go through a third party software. We warned people about it. Uh, and then we said, hey, if you want to watch movies together as a group, this is a great way to do it. And so we we did votes in our usual structure and all those students came together and said, we wanna show this movie at this time. Uh, and then we basically hosted a screening of Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon one week. And then the next week uh, we did uh, another screening. I'm trying to, uh, Indiana Jones is what we ended up doing. Uh, and we had, you know, people come in and out of that and they had conversations around the movie. So even though we weren't in the physical theater or the physical union space, we were still doing things, which was mm -hmm. super cool. That, congratulations on how, how you pivoted <laughs> and how you were able to still bring that, that experience. Well, hoping that things get back to a new sense of normal by fall and you're mm -hmm. back working with the directorate, what's something that you are really looking forward to this coming year? That's like a toss up for, for the, the <laughs> whole next year, which is super good. So uh, if you don't know, uh, I have had the, the lovely chance to start a new committee out of the, to the 10 existing committees. We're, we're adding a new one or a pilot run of it this year. And it's called Wood Games, which is a, a, a committee completely centered around the act of gaming uh, on finding community through gaming. Uh, and so that includes every kind of gaming you can you can think of. That's video games, that's board games, tabletop RPGs. I'm a big fan of D&D myself, which is super good. Um, you know, uh, we've even thought about doing some esports related things and, and diving into the more competitive scene as well. But our goal here is to create a space where no matter what your level of gaming, no matter what your uh, experience with it is, if you've never held a controller in your hands or you've never played a board game in your life, that you can come in and sit down with us uh, and, and play games and just kind of meet people and talk. Um, so that's that's the dream. And so that's what we're in the middle of planning, which is super cool. It sounds like it. I understood <laughs> maybe half of what you said, but what, I, <laughs> but, but what I really understand is that this is just another way to build community and to bring people yeah, for together sure. um, in a new way. Mm -hmm. Well, Liam, thanks so much. I look forward to talking with you again in a little bit. And our, our mm -hmm. next guest has something in common with you because uh, she also was a, a leader on the Wisconsin Union Directorate. But I don't think there was a gaming committee um, when Shana Hetzel was on campus. So I'm delighted to introduce and bring in Shana Hetzel. And uh, Shana, um, again, was part of the Wisconsin Union Directorate when she was on campus. She is a double degree holder from UW-Madison with a bachelor's and a master's degree. And Shana currently works in the American Family Institute um, American Family Insurance Institute for Corporate and Social Impact, where she's an investment director focused on equity and education. And Shana also happens to be on the on as one of the union trustees as well. So Shana, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. Now, um, so tell us a little bit about the roles that you had when you were part of the Wisconsin Union Directorate, maybe what time frame you were at. 
I played many roles for the Wisconsin Union, but my journey started in 2005 as an officer, both of directorate and of union council. And then my senior year and my first year of grad school, I served as the union president, um, and that was in 2006. Okay, well, I um, I happen to remember that 2006 was a time, a pivotal time for Union South, as I recall, and and that was the old Union South, which had um, an unusual character. It had its own character. Uh, Shana, tell us about that pivotal role um, that you played in the transformation of the Union South space. Much like other programs at the Wisconsin Union that you heard Liam and Mark talk about, uh, things change and, and students move through the system. And so the groundwork was really laid before I started at the University of Wisconsin. It was set back in 2002. Uh, the Wisconsin Union Association had commissioned a union facilities assessment plan to really lead into the master planning process both for how do we help preserve Memorial Union and then how do we really optimize Union South because the usage was declining, yet the demand for space and programs was on the rise and there was this really interesting gap. So at, when I joined in 2005, the real decision on the table was uh, exploring whether we renovated Union South or we built a new one. And when the assessment came back and the renovation rivaled the cost of building new, it was a really easy decision because we wanted to start fresh and build from where the students wanted us to start. Wow, that, that must have been very exciting and also really challenging at the same time. You're, you're absolutely right. And you know, when I reflect on the project, it doesn't really feel like a choice that I opted in or out. It was just part of the experience of being a student leader. You know, as Mark mentioned, those fundraising campaigns started in the early 1900s and they knew that they wouldn't use those buildings as a college student, yet they campaigned and contributed. So almost a hundred years later, that honor to lead the next 100 years campaign fell to me and my student leader, fellow student leaders. And so we stepped up from all across the campus and raised our hands to get to work and get that referendum passed. And there's just something really incredibly humbling to have played a role in the union story. I, that um, is so interesting that you mentioned that. And this is a theme that keeps coming up is that is this um, boomerang of experience with, related to the union. And so just as you were involved in fundraising for Union South through the referendum and those efforts, as the alumni and students were back in the 1920s to raise the funds for the first building and how it's different, but it's the same, which uh, really uh, is, is a very, very neat theme. Um, oh, and this, tell us about what this image is. Yeah, so this image really captures that juxtaposition, you know, so that's the, um, uh, what you see in the black and white photo is a photo of the fundraising campaign um, in the early 20s trying to raise money. Um, about 50% of the student body back then um, chipped in to raise funds for Memorial Union. And then on the right in color are my dear friends um, from 2006 marching in the UW homecoming parade, really advocating for preserving the past at Memorial Union and building the future together at Union South. Boy, that's that's great. How wonderful that you could use those images in that, in that same story. So as a trustee, um, you have now a different perspective on the, the directorate and the Wisconsin Union itself. Um, what changes have you noticed over time and in your different roles? All sorts of things have changed and yet nothing has changed. I think that's the theme that you've heard from Mark and from Liam. That's what really makes the union special. The restaurants and the committees may have a different focus and a different look but the feeling of being home remains. And so really my role as a union trustee is to honor that tradition of student leadership, support our staff in its pursuit for innovation, and really um, kind of steward the 100,000 union members around the globe that believe that the union is their home too. With so you have you have a breadth of experience with the union as a student and as a trustee with and you must have created a whole bunch of really wonderful memories during your time. Is there any memory that really stands out for you with the union? 
There absolutely is. So in between being a student and being a trustee, I actually was on the union staff and I helped uh, with the design and construction of Union South. And so my really special memory that really kind of caps off all of that is getting married at Union South in 2011. So just a few months after it opened, my lifelong union friends from directorate um, and the university flew in from across the country to do two things. One, celebrate me marrying my best friend. Um, um, and then two, getting to see this union that they campaigned for five years prior. I mean, there's really no better memory than getting married to that person in a place that you helped build. Boy, that, that does really close the loop, doesn't it? On, on uh, favorite things all together. So thanks for sharing that memory, Shana. Um, I think now it's time for us to move to audience questions. And I'm going to take the first one um, is is for Mark. Mark, this question asks, when there was the recent remodel of the Memorial Union, were, did, were there any unusual findings during that construction process? Uh, let's see. Um, well, uh, there was an awful lot of um, things taken out of the building. Uh, if you, it, it was kind of like if you imagine moving, right? You have, when you move from one house to the next, you empty out the entire house. Well, he had to empty out this house, right? That had not uh, been emptied since uh, people moved in in 1928. So, uh, so lots of things uh, taken out and taken to archives. Uh, things long forgotten as far as uh, uh, paraphernalia and historic documents and historic uh, photos and um, posters and those types of things, especially in the theater wing. Uh, displays that were built for World's Fairs to. Uh, how the uh, uniqueness of this brand new theater built in uh, Wisconsin, those types of things we found. Um, uh, there, a couple, in a couple of instances, uh, as the construction worker, then after we moved out, the construction workers found behind the walls in two different places at least, uh, what we think is moonshine, like bottles of uh, you know old fashioned, uh, what is it, alcohol all the time. Uh, so <laughs> kind of enclosed in the walls, that was that was found in a couple of places. Um, and I remember also um, down in the um, restrooms uh, in the Raskeller, uh, uh, when everything was kind of stripped away um, there and you got back to the original uh, ceramic tile uh, where the pipes were coming in and going out of the building, one of them was labeled lake water. So uh, the building originally was using lake water probably is, you know, to come into the building, right? Uh, so when I mean, you think about old ways of uh, supplying uh, utilities and services to buildings back in the 1920s, but right there written in uh, paint was, you know, this is the pipe going to the lake. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> so. Well, you could almost do an exhibit of, all, of what, of the things that you found. Yeah. Um, well, the, the moonshine is interesting and it, and it might be related to our next question. Um, our friend Mark Ryan from the heart of Illinois uh, remembers a tradition called foshing in the 70s and 80s. Um, I have heard telltale of that tradition. Um, maybe for those who don't know about it, uh, do you do you know what it was, Mark? And, and only by, it, yeah, only by <laughs> it being described to me because I wasn't here then. And um, so my understanding, um, roughly, it's a German version of Mardi Gras, or mm -hmm. happened about that time of year. So, um, and um, at its height, I was told um, it, you could um, they would actually have the foshing occur at both buildings, Memorial Union and Union South, and you could take the bus between the buildings and continue to drink. Uh, you know, as you went from it was basically a drinking festival, right? So. Um, and some of the staff that were here when I first uh, got here that had been here in that time period would tell stories about uh, having to prep the buildings for foshing, which meant taking all the artwork down, right? Because uh, the halls would just have beer spilled everywhere, right? So um, so it was, um, that that's how it's been described to me. So uh, I never participated, but uh, I understand that uh, students had a very good time. So. <laughs> Well, um, I, I, I think there was a, a little bit of a hint in the question to bring it back, but I'm guessing that probably is not going to, that, that isn't part of the current tradition. No. <laughs> my, my next question, um, I would uh, love to direct this both to Liam and to Shana. Um, now, you had your respective committees that you're working on, 
But during your tenure with the directorate, what was the biggest get? You know, what was like the, the film or the band or like the big program during your tenure? Um, Shana, let's start with you. Yeah, so you're uh, really testing my memory here. Uh, <laughs> Do you need a minute? <laughs> no, 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 no. So the first one that comes to mind is a band that I now know well, but at the time was super confused about. Um, so this was when I was union president. So in 2006, uh, the music committee director, uh, Wyndham Manning, brought this group called Girl Talk, which is a single person and a computer. Um, and a DJ. And the line was almost a day ahead of time. It wrapped from the Great Hall on the fourth floor and clogged all of the stairwells through all four layers and levels of the Memorial Union and out the door. And um, it was just a, a moment in 2006 when technology in music started to get its rise. And um, that was one of the biggest shows inside that I remember. Sure. I guess, I guess I'll, I'll go next then. Did you there when it happened? Liam. Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah, Liam, what, did, what about you? <laughs> what was the biggest gap? Sorry, well, I, there was lag. <laughs> and so I think, I think we kind of overlapped a little bit. Yeah, sorry uh, about that. No, tell you're fine. Um, I know that one of the cooler ones that drew such a huge crowd was uh, a year ago, we had a, a sneak screening before it had released of A Star is Born, and that was insane. <laughs> um, I remember the yeah. lines were so long, they would wrap around, and we had, we had like fire control team, like maneuvering lines to make sure we didn't break fire code. Um, and we had to turn a lot of people away. Uh, and so we've shown, we've shown A Star is Born probably like three separate occasions since then for multiple showings each time. So it, it's, it's, it's always drawn a crowd. It's always filled up the theater. So it's, you know, ah. that's a big one. So I know that um, famous people vary from generation to generation. And so this might be for all three of you to answer from your own perspective. Um, we'll start with Mark. Mark, who are some of the famous people to have visited the union? Well, uh, actually during this renovation, um, uh, we've uh, uh, noted that in two uh, significant places. Uh, one is uh, in the um, lobby of the Union Theater now. You'll see some original uh, section of the theater stage that uh, um, uh, had, we had not replaced the stage in the 75 years that it had uh, existed to that point. So took out a section of it and uh, put a circle around it. And that's in the middle of the lobby now. Uh, and in that gold circle around there, you'll see the names of some of the greats that uh, have had stood on the stage to that point. Um, but another place uh, that we've done that um, is in the six uh, remaining guest rooms that e exist on the fourth floor of Memorial Union, the club suites. And those are all named now for famous people that have um, had stayed in the guest rooms. So, uh, and we're here as a result of the student program. So uh, those uh, four of those are off the top of my head. Uh, one's named for Eleanor Roosevelt, one's named for Gertrude Stein, one's named for Louis Armstrong, and one's named for uh, Frank, Frank Lloyd Wright. So oh you know those four people at least also not only spoke here, uh, met students here, but also stayed here, slept here. Wow. So, um, but another whole like couple dozen names in the floor uh, in the Union mm -hmm. Theater. So um, additional people are, you know, of course, John F. Kennedy, Martin Luther King, Yo-Yo um, mm -hmm. Ma, I think has been here three or four times, right? So in fact, he, uh, his debut in the state of Wisconsin was on the Wisconsin Union Theater stage uh, when he was very young. And uh, we put that in his offer letter to help it to uh, help sweeten the pot, uh, where they <laughs> asked him to come back and reopen the Union Theater uh, on its 75th anniversary in uh, 2014. And so oh, it was the first performance on the stage again. Oh, um, that's really yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's really cool. And Shane and Liam, during your tenure, was there somebody who per particularly was famous and more well-known um, that maybe uh, people of my age may not have recognized, but was really super cool for the students? Well, I'll share two related to the uh, uh, initiative and the referendum campaign, actually. So as part of our campaign, we integrated um, a showing of Inconvenient Truth. And um, Lori David was at the Union Theater to talk about climate change and um, the role that 
students and um, governments and organizations could work together. And we used that as a way to talk about green building and the importance of those principles in a new building like Indian South. And then the second one is um, someone that probably isn't as famous except by his association. So that's Ben Carlin. At the time, he oh, was the yeah. executive producer yeah. of um, The Daily Show. And because he is a, a, an alum, um, he happily stumped for the union referendum campaign and filmed a bit on the daily show making fun of the wax cups that disintegrated in your hand on the terrace if you remember before we upgraded to the plastic ones and he encouraged us to look forward and invest in our future so those are two really memorable people that were actually part of our campaign wow what a what a great gap there liam how about you I have had probably, I've had much shorter, I guess, time uh, to <laughs> meet cool people. Um, but I know that uh, DL, I think it was Performing Arts Committee brought in um, uh, Stephanie Beatriz, who is an, uh, uh, a bi actress who plays a character on Brooklyn Nine-Nine, I believe. Oh, okay. And she's, she's amazing. Uh, she, I came and I remember that drew quite a crowd. Uh, and on top of that, I know that she shouted out, we were doing an LGBTQ film festival at the same time, uh -huh. which was like a good collaboration kind of thing there. Uh -huh. um, and then one I just missed before I got there, Nick Offerman was there. <laughs> and I really wanted to meet Nick Offerman. I love Nick Offerman. Uh -huh. um, so that was probably a big one too. Oh, that's what a thrill. Boy, what a great, what a great <laughs> Um, So I have a question here from Judith. Um, are there any ghosts reported to be in the union? Uh, there are. Um, uh, uh, ghosts is a, a kind of a legend or a history thing uh, uh, associated with performance spaces. And so, uh, and that's if uh, someone um, dies uh, while in your performance space or on your stage, uh, then you have a ghost in your theater. And the union does have two ghosts uh, in the union theater. And uh, the staff there, um, will tell you that they believe strange things happen from time to time, <laughs> so. All right, yeah. all right. I, I think there's there's probably a ghost in nearly every uh, old building on campus, <laughs> I think. I, I, that's, the, that's the lore, at least. Um, there, there was a question from Richard uh, about the theater specifically asking, did you discover the areas under the theater which were used for makeup in the 1950s? Um, I don't, I don't, uh, remember that specifically. I don't know if, um, I don't know if that's, uh, if he's referencing old dressing rooms or he's referencing, uh, you know, the theater wing when it was built also had, um, uh, the scene shop was part of, uh, so the scene, uh, scenes were actually made, the, the backdrops and so forth. Uh, also as part of the, um, craft shop that was added at that time. Right. So, um, Dark room and clay studios, all those things were added as well. Uh, maker space and so forth, which is now Wheelhouse Studios. Uh, it's kind of where the old bowling alley used to be, uh, right off of the first floor, um, just west of the Stiff Skeller. So, uh, so I'm it, based on his question. I don't know quite where the makeup rooms would have been, but mm -hmm. uh, I, I will now have to figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, a good mystery to solve. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, there's here's a question um, for for Mark, a logistical one. How many weddings does the union do per year? Well, in a good year, which will not be this year, unfortunately, <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah um, it can oscillate between like ninety and one hundred and twenty. So just okay. and most of those um, happen in the summer because uh, we are really committed to not having the large um, banquet spaces, Great Hall, Trip Commons, Varsity Hall used up a bunch uh, with uh, weddings during the academic year. So for nine months out of the year, only one wedding can be in each of those large spaces per month. So Great Hall can only be used for one day, usually in the month of September, October, so forth, for a wedding. Because the rest of the time, the student organizations need large spaces to do their programs and their events, right? So, so when you think about 90 to 120 weddings, and they all happen in June, July, and August, uh, <laughs> it's a very busy season for us. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, uh, I'm sure that there's a long waiting list for that. So Shana, even more lucky that you could, <laughs> could sort of pull some strings there. So here's a question uh, for each of you. And I'll, I'll start with Liam. 
What is your favorite union tradition, space, or event? Oh, easy one. The, the My favorite event every year is uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show, uh, which is an event that we put on every year uh, as a collaboration between the Film Committee and the Performing Arts Committee over in Shannon Hall. If you've never been, it's insane. Uh, it's a screening of Rocky Horror Picture Show, obviously, but we get a live shadow cast to perform it in front of it. Uh, and then all, pretty much everyone who decides to work it, myself included, dress in some kind of wear for the movie. I've been in a, a long flowing black dress the last two years, which has been fun. Um, so it's it's just, you go all out, you have fun. Uh, and this last year I was able to get all, like shout out to the entire theater and get everyone to say happy Halloween on cue, which was really cool. So being up in front of like 600 people and, and leading them in a chant was probably the coolest experience of, of college so far. So easy, hands down. And I, I feel like that's a tradition that's been going on for like since the movie came out. I mean, I feel like that is something that happens year after year after mm -hmm. year. I think it's happened. It happened for a long time. And then there was a break in it because I know there was a film director a few years back who actually reinstated it uh, okay. and then brought it back. And it's been going strong ever since. So it's it's been a, it's a long time tradition that we kind of brought back and have continued to do every I'm year. Good for you. <laughs> Shana, how about you? Favorite event, tradition, or space in the union? Yeah, that's an easy one for me as well. And it is less publicly known or maybe not publicly known at all. Um, and I have my little props here. Um, when you are a student leader on directorate, you get inducted into the Royal Order of Beefeaters in order to be oh. protectors of the union and stewards of the tradition that came um, before you. And so I love that kind of really legacy spirit of these, you know, hundred years of student leaders passing the torch and welcoming you into it. And it's not just your playground, but you have a responsibility to take care of it and pass it on the next year. And so that's something that I love every May. And now as a trustee, I get to watch that changing of the guard and it's just really special. Um, it sounds like a really beautiful tradition and longstanding. Mark, how about you? Well, that would have been my favorite event. Uh, <laughs> I get a little emotional every year about that because um, it's, also, it's also at one, uh, one time in the year where we have uh, the incoming students, stu the new student leaders who are full of uh, hope and vision for what they want to accomplish um, in the room for this uh, traditional dinner and this ceremony, but we also have the union trustees, the alums who, you know, did this, uh, many of them did this exact same thing decades ago. And so you see the arc of the union story all in that room uh, together during this tradition. So mm -hmm. uh, that's one of my favorite events. Yeah, uh, my favorite. So then my favorite space would be Memorial Hall on the second floor of, of uh, Memorial Union. Um, most people don't know it's called Memorial Hall. It's the uh, 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 part of the, um, Second floor there where the uh, we commemorate uh, the fact that uh, Memorial Union is a war memorial and we honor uh, the men and women of uh, Wisconsin who have given their life uh, in service to their country. So, which was all updated during the renovation. Uh, and mm -hmm. um, that's just, a it's, a it's a nice reminder to me every time I walk through that space of the building of mm -hmm. service to country, service to something greater than yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is something, you know, we call it Memorial Union, um, but to remember, especially with Memorial Day weekend coming, to remember that it really is the those who fought and died for the country is really where it, um, who, who commemorates it. Um, I'm just looking to see uh, some of the other questions. There is one question um, about a band, about the bands and the music, the acts that have performed. Is there one that you, that was like the, the top couple attended ones, ones that had the, I'm not saying that very well, ones mm. with the largest attendance yeah. in your recollection. Liam, how about in how about in the time, Liam or Shana, do you remember? Oh, you had They're, talked about. Uh, I love I, everything that they do at Wood Music is so fantastic. So shout out to all the people in the crowd that are from Wood Music. Um, but they put on uh, Dorian Electra, which is someone I had never heard of up until the this, the concert this last semester, but they brought <laughs> Torian Electra and they were insane and the crowd was insane. And there, I, it was, I loved it. Um, but then the biggest crowd I saw that I wasn't there for was a hundred Gex, which was a band again, I've never heard of, 
but they have like this weird techno music and everyone went nuts. There is like footage of the crowd, like the crowd just going insane during it and it was lovely. So mm -hmm. keep keep an eye on the concert schedule. There are some pretty cool things that you've never heard of that are truly amazing. So mm -hmm. it sounds like it. <laughs> I'm not a good one to ask. So if, if they ask if I've heard of the band and I have, then they probably don't book the band. Right. right. <laughs> well, not. that's I, I was kind of going there myself. Like you you guys see them when they're cool and up and coming, I'm sure. Shana, how about you? Was there a really large attended concert or um, music group when you were there? I'm about as cool as Mark um, <laughs> when it comes to plugging into those events. I know that the music committee did a lot of really fun things um, in 05, 06 um, while I was there. I don't know if I can name a specific act. Mm -hmm. I think you, you were raising money. <laughs> <laughs> Liam, were you going to say something? Yeah, I got one more. I know that it was before, again, right before I came. Um, but there was, I, I, if everyone's heard of Lizzo, Lizzo came here before she really jumped yeah. up in, in popularity. And so there's a lot of like wood music committee members that are like, I met Lizzo and she was super cool. And it was like <laughs> weird where she could just wander. And so like the fact that like, we do have cool acts that you've never heard of, that you will definitely mm -hmm. hear of one day. So that's mm -hmm. a cool one as well. Mark, I, a question came in um, about um, popular figures or political figures who have come to the union. You had mentioned John F. Kennedy or, and Martin Luther King uh, Jr. Um, in more recently, have we have the union played host or far in the past has the union played host political or popular figures? Yeah, I don't know if you consider him a political figure, but um, uh, in the recent uh, past, uh, we actually did a lecture out on the terrace uh, for Neil deGrasse Tyson. Uh, oh, I love him. And, there must have been 4,000 students out there, right? Yeah. Uh, that's with the old terrace stage, right? I mean, that was like before the renovation. So um, so um, those types of speakers still are really uh, loved by the students. Um, in fact, uh, before the pandemic came, um, I'm sure we would have uh, had standing room only for um, Bill Nye. He was on the docket you know, to come. So mm -hmm. um, that those are still uh, speakers that students just really want to um, yeah. be in person, right? And, yeah. Well, um, uh, Mark, you had briefly mentioned, um, you know, the the renovations, and we've had questions about that, and of course the the um, the history of of union growth and change. As you're looking ahead to next year, um, what's ahead for the union? What's the next the next thing that you're really focusing your energy on as the director? Well, um, we're actually uh, going to double down on our commitment to student leadership, right? So, uh, and making student leadership and program experiences available to students. Uh, um, and that's um, one, uh, it's because it's our mission, right? Uh, but uh, what uh, we probably haven't said in this program yet is that that entire mission is paid for out of our own uh, food and beverage sales, right? So mm -hmm. the union receives no money from the state or from the university. Uh, so all of the great experiences that Liam's having and that Shana had and uh, all of the uh, program dollars that go into booking all those programs and events and then the training that goes along with all of that and the um, small amount of stipends we can give the students uh, so that they can actually afford their college education while they're doing these things, right, um, is all funded through our own retail sales, right? Mm -hmm. So um, And so we're, um, we're a little on shaky, uh, on, on, on shaky ground. Uh, uh, going into this next year as a result of what we're going through because we just don't know uh, what kind of sales we'll have, right? So mm -hmm. so I'd really hate for their experiences uh, that they're having and did have uh, to be impacted by that. So we're going to really focus all our efforts the next year or two on making sure we have plenty of support um, to make sure that students still have these wonderful experiences. Yeah. Well, well, given everything that you've shared and, and hearing so much about the powerful experiences that Shana and Liam had at and understanding now more the history of the union and really the union as experience as well as place, it seems like that is um, an incredible investment to continue those traditions. So I wanna thank all three of you for being here with us tonight and for sharing your stories, your memories and your experiences. I wanna thank the viewers for sharing your memories and thoughts uh, in the chat. And um, we hope we get to see you again on a future program. Just a note about that, and uh, that is that usually we do these programs every Tuesday night and some Thursdays, but next week we're going to take a week off.
So um, the, uh, the next UW Now program will be on Tuesday, June 2nd with Mike Knetter, and he will be having another really thought-provoking discussion with UW experts on a topic related to UW expertise and impact with COVID. And we'll hope to see you all again um, soon with that. So thank you again for watching. Take care of yourselves and on Wisconsin.